What does it take to turn a legislative idea into a law? The process is extremely involved, but can be broken down into a few basic steps. First, you must find a sponsor in both the Senate and Assembly. That's often a committee chair with the power to get a bill out of his or her committee to the floor for a vote. For NYSARC, that often means the mental hygiene chairs in both houses. Next, a bill must be drafted along with official legislative supporting memos for the sponsor's staff. These will often be revised, but it gives legislative staff a good starting point. This is an important step since without this effort, staff can easily become overwhelmed, which can result in inaction on the proposed bill. Research and background information on the subject of the bill must be provided to legislative staff. So, for example, on the trend factor bill, NYSARC provided extensive explanations of how the trend factor worked, why it was proposed, and of course what it would cost. Once a bill is introduced, it is assigned a number. The goal is to get the exact same bill introduced in both houses, which are different only in that they have two different numbers, one for the Senate and one for the Assembly. Finally, and most importantly, advocates of the bill, in this case NYSARC, work toward persuading legislators to pass or oppose legislation. This takes considerable skill by many people and frankly, very often, a lot of luck. Bill numbers are the single most important piece of information advocates can have for communicating with the legislature. Entire issues can be known by the bill number that deals with them. These numbers are shorthand for issues before the legislature information justifying bills dealing with those issues, and pertinent legal information. For example, here is Senate Bill 4622 by Senator Hannon, otherwise known as the Health Care Decisions Act. With this single number, tens of thousands of people around the state can focus on an issue in ways that would otherwise be impossible if they had to explain a complex bill. A bill number means that there is a potential change in the law and that forces an issue to be taken seriously. Therefore, bill numbers are a critical focal point for statewide legislative advocacy campaigns. Although important, NYSARC does not always choose to bring in what we refer to as grassroots advocates, such as family members and the individuals we support. Sometimes this approach attracts attention when it's best not to. However, for big issues, grassroots advocacy creates visibility and pressure on a variety of state officials, which is essential to building necessary support for the issues at hand. In the Health Care Decisions Act, for example, NYSARC organized family members and brought them, along with professionals, right into the Senate lobby for nearly two straight weeks to meet with their senator. This was highly effective, and the Health Care Decisions Act eventually became law. During the Cuomo administration, the waiting list for out-of-home residential services was a major concern when funding for development was cut. In response, NYSARC, along with UCP of New York State, brought nearly 3,000 parents, advocates, and professionals to Albany to meet with their legislators. As a result of this grassroots advocacy effort, funding for residential development was restored. Recently, NYSARC, along with several other agencies, held a vigil outside of the governor's office to advocate against budget cuts and to better position the organization for the upcoming budget year. This created a strong presence that will serve the organization well in this time of strained public finances and budget cuts. Now let's talk about some of the technical aspects for passing legislation. First, the exact same bill must pass both houses. Therefore, the first house to pass the bill sends it to the other house. The second house performs a substitution, meaning, for example, that if the Senate passes its version of a bill first, the Assembly will take the Senate version, substitute it for its version of the bill on the Assembly floor, and pass it. Next, the Assembly must return the Senate bill to the Senate. The Senate now has the duty to send its bill to the Governor to be approved or vetoed. When the bill is received by the Governor, NYSARC will meet with his staff to explain the organization, support, or opposition. At this point, it might be important to have the organization's grassroots weigh in. The governor now has 10 days to sign or veto the bill. If he does not act on the bill, it becomes law by default. Welcome to Part 3 of NYSARC's web-based presentation on legislative advocacy. 
this portion of the training provides basic how-to information on effective advocacy. Advocacy starts with the grassroots. NYSARC's influence in Albany depends completely on the fact that it represents a vast network of chapters comprised of family members, people who have developmental disabilities, and professionals and communities throughout the state. Therefore, NYSARC must effectively transmit the needs of its grassroots to legislators in Albany, while NYSARC chapters do the same at the local level. As the slide suggests, transmitting the same message at the local level and the state level makes it clear to legislators that the organization represents a single statewide entity that must be dealt with. The ability of chapters to influence legislators depends on the ability of those chapters to meet their legislators' needs. What are those needs? First and foremost, legislators have a need to be visible in their communities as a critical comp component of getting reelected. Like everyone, they want to hold on to their jobs. What can chapters do? Chapters can give their legislators community visibility by inviting them to visit their programs and or inviting them to chapter events. Chapters can use awards and newsletters to further enhance their legislators' visibility and publicly associate their legislator with a good cause. However, a relationship isn't a one-way street. Therefore, chapters should know their legislator's record and remind him or her that they track it. Most NYSARC chapters do an excellent job of this. Throughout the state, NYSARC chapters are well known and respected as a good cause in their communities. Politicians want to be associated with them, and in return, that positions NYSARC chapters to be able to press for their legislators' help and influence. Remember, whether on the phone or in a meeting with your legislator or their staff, you are the expert. Sometimes family members and other grassroots advocates feel intimidated in these meetings but should temper any fear by reminding themselves that they know more about their needs and the needs of the individuals they care about than their legislator or staff ever will. Expect frustration. Never give up. Changes in the law are a very important and serious business. Understandably, they take time. Patience, persistence, and a tolerance for frustration pay off in the end. Understand that legislators work in a very fluid environment full of unpredictable economic, social, and political variables. What is true today may not be this evening or tomorrow morning. This means that arguments and strategy are subject to change at a minute's notice. And remember, politics trumps everything. We can't take politics out of politicians or government. A political system is just that, a system based on politics. Throwing up our hands because it's just politics misses the point. Knowing why legislators act as they do is key toward effective advocacy. If it gets to be too much, take a deep breath. Take a look at your options and then get back to work. Advocacy takes place entirely through communication. Often you will be asked by NYSARC or others to communicate a message to your legislator. Email, phone calls, and face-to-face -face visits are the most common methods of communication. They each have advantages and disadvantages. For example, email is quick and convenient to produce and can be done so in high volume. However, it is relatively easy to dismiss and can pile up in a staff member's in-basket for months. Phone calls can be produced in high volume and are also relatively convenient. Phones ringing off the hook in a legislator's office may be disruptive, but it gets attention. And often, understanding that this isn't a popularity contest, that's exactly what is needed. However, it can be impossible to transmit complex information over the phone to bewildered staff assigned to answer those calls. Face-to-face -face visits have a long-standing proven value, but there are time and distance constraints for visits to Albany, even the district office, and particularly if the issue takes us to Washington. Whether by email, phone, or a face-to-face -face visit, communication has two objectives. The first is to make the issue important to your legislator. And the second is to get your legislator to understand the solution to an issue you are proposing, whether it is a bill or a budget initiative. Therefore, the first question is, why does a legislator think an issue is important? The answer, because their constituents tell them it is. Constituents always have status. Legislators depend on them to get reelected. And as we all know, parents or other family members have a special status. However, constituents who are also parents have a very special status and can make it an issue very important. 
and the reality is that legislators have too much to do to take an issue seriously until they believe it is an important issue. Parents who are constituents make issues important. They are the ones who make it clear, for example, that recruitment and retention of direct support professionals is an issue that can't be ignored. Professionals and lobbyists, on the other hand, are often good at helping legislators to understand solutions to an issue. For example, why is a trend factor the best way to deal with the issue of employee recruitment and retention? This distinction between family members on the one hand and lobbyists and professionals on the other is a generalization, of course. In truth, the abilities of the two groups often overlap. Family members help legislators understand solutions to an issue, just as lobbyists and professionals let them know why it's important. However, this is a useful distinction for purposes of, for example, planning a meeting with your legislator.